Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Johnners Podcasting Network and Such Good Shoot want to welcome you to, well, Such Good Shoot, the podcast about anything and everything in wrestling. You know, up here we got Isaac. Oh, hello. Over there, we have Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi. I think he broke his wrist at work. I'm your host, Dozer. Let's get it on today. I think I broke my wrist at work, dude. This son of a bitch hurts. Why does it hurt? I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. That's just not good. Breaking down a lot of chickens, I think, might have done it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You and those goddamn chickens. Yeah, yeah. very exciting start to the podcast today. Oh, yes. Chicken. Well, we're, we're (laughs) we're taking our time to get there because, you know... We it ain't have, a good week. It ain't a good week. Sure, it is. It's a great week. We got a lot to we got a lot to talk about. We do lot, have a lot to talk about, this, but you know how we have to start. This upcoming week is a good week. This past week has been a little hard. You're right. Yes. So, I think we need to start off with our traditional raising of the glass, the cracking of the beer, to Mister Wonderful Paul Orendorf. He left us this week, and we're going to miss you. Cheers, mates. That mic is aggressively loud. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Shane's a beer drinker, full disclosure. Oh, he's not, that, was he's some, not... that was some shine, too. Oh, really? Oh, man. Look at That's you. A, God, that was a 50, 50 spot, brother. Well, oh. I think we should. I think we should um, get on a on a better note. And I think right away, the first thing I want to do is I can't hold this in anymore. Uh, Shane and I have. I might not be able to hold this in. Much yeah, longer. dude. If you Sorry, gotta go, go if, if you got a boot, dude. If you got to go, boot, boot. Like, oh no, worries, no absolutely man. We can not, hold dude. I'll take a sip of this water right here. But um, but I'm speaking of, of shine and uh, in drinking. Shane and I had a really, really incredible opportunity. Uh, We got to sit down and record an interview uh, last week with uh, one dirty bitch, ODB herself. Um, And yeah, so tomorrow morning at 4.20 a.m., suchgoodshoot.com, wherever you get your uh, podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, uh, MyCast, Anchor, Anchor, uh, any of those places you'll be able to find at YouTube. So check it out. It's a really fun interview. We talk about food trucking. We talk about uh, booze, uh, getting drunk, boobs. matches, boobs, uh, yeah, the, boobs. Power, the power of the bra, uh, and many oh. other things. And um, and so check that out tomorrow morning. And just a teaser, that is not the only interview that we have lined up for you. We're going to announce nope. another one. We're going to announce another one at the end of this podcast. And one of, of uh, I think, four more um so maybe way too five, many maybe even five more uh that we have booked out so like keep an eye out um because we're very very excited about this this upcoming stretch of interviews can i just say how bizarre it is that people actually want to talk to us yeah <laughs> you can say it please do say it say it it's very bizarre people want to talk to us because i don't know about you but like i'm a big awkward turtle man it's, it's all weird and bullshit man i don't know what's going on it's bizarre, man. It, but it's uh, it's been really fun, you know. Like in a lot of ways, this is um, you know, this is every fan's dream getting to talk to the people that you that you admire and that you, and you love watching. So uh, hopefully, we can uh, vicariously share some of that with you guys. Um, but speaking of people that we admire and we love, do we have a chic of the week? It's time for chic of the week. Week, week, week. Oh, that, was, that was pretty good for for not being soundboarded, man. Yeah, um, and, that was, and that was not, impressive. My ears are still like fully intact too. My eardrums aren't bleeding. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, well, well, real quick, I, I do feel like I have to say this one. Uh, he 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 tweeted a picture of uh, Paul Orndorff and said, "Paul Orndorff, Paul Orndorff, my brother, you were the toughest. We train together. We ride together. Uh, you were excellent, Bubba. I am so sad. I love you forever. Rest in peace." Um, I have not poured my other drink yet. Um, this one is is for you, Isaac. Two days ago, he tweeted an, a picture of MF Doom and said, "MF Doom, I love you, Bubba." Um, MF Doom is a fucking real one, dude. 
for reals. So one of the greatest um, of all time and a fuck another tragic loss. So I'm drinking for him too. And in one more uh, timely one, uh, four days ago, he tweeted Connor McNuggets or whatever the fuck your name is. Talk is cheap. Go fuck yourself for good. Jabroni hashtag UFC 264 um, <laughs> on the account that Connor broke his own leg in a vicious manner. Um, sure did, dude. Jesus did, did you did you ever end up seeing it, Isaac, or at least well, a picture? I, I have uh, I have a hard time with those. No, no, no. I, I saw the picture. I saw the oh, picture, okay. and that was more than enough because that's, that's why I, I, uh, I did something similar to my ankle. Yeah, that's why I don't send you anything like that, even though like I really, in my heart of hearts, wanted to, just because I oh, feel yeah. like your reaction would have been. Um, yeah, maybe maybe one of these days, once we start getting uh, some more Patreon subscribers, we can uh, get people. Just like we're gonna get people to get you to watch shitty movies you can get yeah. me to watch people breaking their fucking limbs and almost throwing up watching it yeah oh hey, hey dozer it's time for uh, another weekly segment da -na -na, na -na -na. it's time for change have you watched, have you watched they, they live, live? <laughs> have, you, have you watched that yet did you just record that is is that gonna be the next sound bite dozer is did i see no you i can't record I, shit I, Oh, I thought you were. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I've not watched. They live. Yeah, no, we're waiting. You get, we're waiting for that uh, for crypto to get on that fucking yeah, uh, man, Patreon, keep dude. Telling, keep telling everyone. He's got all these bitcoins. I told him for one bitcoin, dude, he can fucking subscribe. Yeah, bro. To honestly, bitcoin. for one bitcoin, I, you don't want to know what I'll do for one bitcoin. Yeah, you yeah, trade dude. me one singular bitcoin crypto. <laughs> trade, 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 trade me all of your um all of your uh, MJF uh, uh spoopy Boy. dollars. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's one. That's a fucking weird one, dude. Bro. Well, good, it's... good for him. Oh, this is that's one of the long ones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's one of the annoying ones. Yeah, dude, I love um, that you you managed to get all of those on the board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Shane has not watched it. Well. I guess no. I guess we should um, should we talk about anything in wrestling? Well, uh, Shane and I actually watched. I, let's talk about let's talk about AEW. Not this last one, but the the one. With the oh. first live crowd in wrestling, can we talk about that? Or do you want something? Absolute. Else? Well, I was going to talk about you guys finally got me to watch some New Japan. It's we been did. a while since we've chatted. We did. We did. We did. We've been doing a lot of stuff, man. We've been hanging out together. Yeah, it's man. Great. It's been a great time. But you know, why don't you guys talk about that uh, that AW shit going on? I, I mean, I just want to talk about the first the first show back with fans. I didn't get a chance to watch. Um, last night, just because I, I had to wake up for work early as shit, so I didn't get a chance. But I watched last week's show, and goddamn, I gotta say, I think a lot of it was the crowd. But like, I have missed that energy from the crowd more than I even realized. And and one one thing I'll give AEW a lot of credit for is their crowd is almost always insane. It was, I mean, it, it's crazier now, but even pre pandemic, man. I mean, their crowds were, were were a lot more attuned to like Attitude Era crowds, where it was yeah. just constant energy, just people popping yeah, everywhere. Probably. Maybe maybe not with that face heel dynamic all the time. They, you know, a lot of matches they were just cheering everything, but that's kind of you yeah. know. It was just so good to have that like live energy again, though, and like I, I think the moment. I mean, you know, like the the defining moment was Jericho coming out and the crowd being able to sing his song again and sing his entrance music and like him sitting there, uh, you know, and like I was watching, I was like, look at him, like, you know, this guy's supposed to be a heel, he's supposed to be a bad, and he could not help himself, but like you could see him tearing up. Oh, Jer oh Jer Jericho's a face now. Oh, is he now? Okay, so yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, because yeah, he's 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 fighting with the with the Maxwell dude, the Maxwell. Right. James I just figured Friedman. they were both. I figured they were just both fucking doing no, the ish stick. But either way, like he was tearing up, and it was legit. You could tell. And then fucking dipshit, fuckface, fat fuck yeah, fan. Yeah, dude, uh, Jim Cornette fan, the Cornette man. member. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love, listen, yeah, listen, listen, Cornette member. That listen, guy. Listen, you could talk about him doing something because he thought Cornette would like it, but I have listened to a lot of Cornette's podcasts, and yeah, there's no, never I been a I, single yeah. second where he no. has ever given anything, any close, anything close to an impression that you should ever attack a wrestler, <laughs> especially trying to jump in the ring. Yeah, why no, would I, he, I don't, I don't why would he advocate that 
as the man who has beaten down more fans than most yeah. other people. Yeah. You know, like he's like, yeah, I mean, like he, and he was talked about it and he says, you know, like there's a difference between me saying like, yes, I look at him and I feel like a normal person could beat up fucking the young bucks. And that's completely different from saying, I think you should fucking try and jump in the ring and assault them. And it's not, I don't think, you know, and his responses to that were great. Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, but I, but I do bet you Cornette threw him like a hundred on the side. You know what I mean? He's like, eh, you know, like I won't block you, but you know, like, it just... uh, I don't think so, man. That's yeah, a dude, pretty hard dude, line he has. Uh, not only that, but uh, no, Cornette, I... Cornette is notoriously cheap. Okay, <laughs> he's a, he does not give out any. He's not giving a hundred dollars out to anybody if he can aff- fucking avoid it. So do, here's do the question. Do you think maybe the fan missed the mark and he was like supposed to go attack Kenny or something? Maybe, I don't like know. I don't know. <laughs> he what thought, the he deal thought Kenny was, was Jericho. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the deal was, but either way, I will say, and I will go on record right now, live on fucking air, that I that and I said this when I was watching, that this is the first time I've looked at Kenny Omega, and I've seen him as something, seen him as a professional wrestler, like he looks the part. He does. I'm not going to deny that. I was like, holy shit. yeah, I was like, holy shit. He actually looks like a fucking badass heel wrestler. And like, it's yeah, weird. It's, like, it's so simple as that facial hair, but it fucking works, man. Dude, and, and, and you also went and, and, and a couple nights ago, you watched uh, Jericho versus Kenny, the, the first one from like Russell Kingdom 12 or whatever. And you watched a, just a really wonderful Kenny like fight. I, I don't want to call that a wrestling match because it wasn't, <laughs> but. That one was really good. Yeah, I was I I had a really good time with that one and and it was uh, it was I mean a lot of it was Jericho, I will say, but at the same time like I think the whole thing was a, like the whole part was a lot of it was supposed to be Jericho too. Yeah, oh, you know what I mean? He's just goddamn the energy he brought to New Japan after coming out of fucking WWE that last time was just incredible. There's just No, nothing. no, no. He shits on podcasts. We don't need just incredible here. <laughs> they, Dude, that was come on, that was one of the defining moments of our podcast. And I can't, there find, is, I, I, dude, I can't find that video anywhere. There is, there <laughs> is shit, literally. Oh, did it? Mm-hmm. Oh wow, the uh, there is like legitimately nothing better in that match though than Chris Jericho punching Red Shoes, then putting his son in the lion tamer right. In front I was. Of him. I was dude. so mad, dude. I was so mad. I was like fucking yeah, legit. You, you, dude, you yeah, you were getting real, real uh legit I, heel heat. I, I, love, I love red shoes. Red shoes is like he is on my Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling. He's not one of the four heads, he's just sitting on top of one of them chilling in his red shoes. <laughs> but dude, he's like he's an incredible, incredible fucking referee. Yeah, I mean, really one of the best of all time. I mean, yeah. for sure. Yeah, insanely good. Yeah, the best, awesome. the best in especially in Japanese wrestling. There's nobody who even comes yeah. close. So uh, Dozer, speaking, uh, talk about New Japan. Quick, uh, what, what are some of your quick thoughts about about your first couple matches with the uh, with the company? So first, you know, I'm the presentation guy. They have great fucking sets. Like it felt WrestleMania esque, and I dug that. We were watching. They need to, it was Kingdom WrestleMania 12. 12. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were watching their WrestleMania. So obviously, it's big deal. They got to figure out what the fuck is with putting half the words in Japanese, half in English, but none of the same. I don't care what you do; just make it consistent. But the wrestling was fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Some of those bumps, I'm just like, no, stop! <laughs> Don't do that. Have a career. Fuck oh, yeah. I, 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 I was, We watched Cody. Match. We watched the oh, Cody yeah, we, uh, uh, Kodo. Kodo was, yeah, yeah. Cody where he does Kodo the where, fucking crossroads, crossroads off the apron. hell, dude. The like the only time the crossroads has ever actually looked like a finish, dude. Dude, he did the crossroads off the apron, basically under the fucking ramp, and you're like, <laughs> dude, dude, he and just yeah. he, he just dives yeah. directly on like this, like the top of his back, bottom it's of his so good. neck, dude. It's so nasty. It's it's so good. God damn, Coda is like, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I talk a lot of shit because I think ne- it's funny, but Coda is an incredible wrestler. Neck bump king, man. 
and also yeah, like he he's he's an actual action star in Japan too. I mean, he's like one of those guys that has completely like eclipsed New Japan as a company. Like he doesn't usually act as himself, but he acts as like Tiger Mask. So like everyone like the, knows it's Coda. Yeah. He's like the Dave Bautista. Is that what you're saying? I I, I would I mean I, I don't know. I've never seen any of his films or acting, but I know that they happen. Um, I've seen a lot of his wrestling, and I would say he's probably a, a better wrestler than David Bautista. Not to take anything away <laughs> from him, but you know, I think probably. Coda is. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I love and don't get me wrong, I love Batista, but like he's not a I, great worker. <laughs> I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to step on Batista's toes, man. He would come fuck me up. You know, he, he's he's got a chance, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take him. Fuck that. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Brad, dude, he would that. fuck me up with his God smack tattoo, man. <laughs> dude, dude, that belly God dude. smack belly button tattoo. Oof. That's, that's a, some dedication. That's a that's I'm a fucking alive. lost. That's a lost bet, dude, or a bad drunken <laughs> night. Dude. There's no way you did that on purpose. Go, oh, where you? Fuck. So, oh, man. So, are we done? Have we beat around the bush enough, or should I should I come up with a question and quickly ask y'all? We have a question, don't we? Because we yes, asked, but we I asked... completely forgot what the fuck it is. Okay, I d I didn't forget it was what it was because this question of the week, this is Dozer's question of the week. We actually asked ODB. So you'll find out at question. four fifteen tomorrow morning because YouTube fuck you. Yeah, no, but but for real, Doze, we asked the question of the week, so so she will answer this. But but Shane, Dozer wants to know uh, what you would like to see CM Punk do if he made a non-wrestling return, like a non-in-ring return to wrestling. Um, honestly, I think that he would be a really, really good like management figure. I think he would be, and and not like like I think he would be a, a great manager for wrestlers. But I'm talking like. GM Higher authority GM, figure, you know, William Regal, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel like he would be perfect for that because he's like can... a. I'm sorry, it just popped into my head like a storyline where fucking him and, and Hunter are fucking battling behind the scenes for control of fucking Raw or something like that. That could be oh, the actual or... Raw versus SmackDown war, have each or one of them at control. They could just battle behind the scenes for NXT and. You know, we could skip the middle man, and that would be great. You know what I mean? Can you imagine that? Like the lights go out. You know, like people, like random people, have been getting attacked, and like no one knows what's up, and, and you know, the lights go out, and blah, 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 blah. oh, dude, the, the place is come unglued. My button lied to me. Yeah, I don't think that's the important song. It is. No, that yeah, no, that, that's that, was that old yeah, one. This, this fire, dude, by Kill Switch oh, Engage. That, that was that, I even, like that song more. That was originally even... Randy Orton's theme. Okay, that's why I was like, yeah, dude, that's... <laughs> that was Randy Orton's theme originally. He used it for like, two episodes, but yeah. Oh, really? I didn't. I didn't know that. That's funny. That yeah, I, I think ass. I think that um, he would be a great addition to the commentary team on NXT. Ooh, NXT <laughs> commentary. Because I love, like, honestly, CM Punk on commentary is incredible. Like, he really is, like, an incredible talker. And anytime he's done that, it's been, like, just incredible and, and hilarious. And him with Beth Phoenix, I think, would be really good. I think him with yes. Wade would be incredibly funny. I, yeah, I think the three of those people, like, three of those those guys together would be great. Yeah, but you don't have anyone well, to do play-by-play -play at that point, though. That's the issue. Is, get Morrow you know, in there. <laughs> well, this is that moment I got to pull out some DDJ shit going on right now. DDJ? I love DDJ. Yes. Because CM Punk and Wade, in a roundabout way, have already commentated together. They were both commentators on Ultimate Beastmaster on Netflix. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the you, fuck are you, you talking this about? off the top of your head? This is yes, because I watched it. <laughs> yeah, this is dozer level knowledge for sure. What it, it was what fucking terrible, but it's this Master. Netflix American Ninja Warrior ripoff type show. CM Punk was commentary with Wade Barrett. 
ish. So the way they did it is there were, I think, eight countries represented. And each country had its own commentary team. CM Punk was on the American commentary team and Wade Barrett was on the English commentary team. But who so, was better? Well, we live in America, so we got more of the Eng oh. of uh, Punk. Oh, well, I, I didn't know if you had went on like YouTube and then had done some... Nah. No. I know Wade's great. Yeah. Wade Absolutely. is... I mean, there's a reason. There's a reason why he was the one who won that first season of NXT and was the leader of the Nexus. I mean, the guy can fucking cut a promo, and he's convincing. I mean, he is he he's a great, great promo, great talker, good worker. The problem is, he's that William <laughs> Regal type, which I mean, Stone Cold. Yeah, I mean, Stone but William Cold and dry humor. He can, and what I mean yeah. by that is he's great. There's nothing wrong with being the William Regal type. You're just never going to get to the top of the company yeah. as the William much. Regal type. I mean, he had that moment, and he, you know, they could have. And you know, like if you if you've watched the Heath Slater interview from Heath uh, Miller, Heath, sorry, Heath, 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 uh, Heath, 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 Heath Wallace, Wallace the Third Esquire, Heath Waller Millis, Miller the Third. No, Heath Wall Wallace Esquire. Miller, Esquire interview. <laughs> um, you know, he talks about that. You yeah. know, and the fact that, like, you know, like, I, I think this is the moment from that interview that, like, I, was my favorite. It's like, yeah, man, let it, let it grow like a beautiful tree, man. Then you cut that bitch down <laughs> <laughs> and, and make a table. Yeah, yes, and make a table. <laughs> but any, like, I watched his Chris Van Vliet interview, and there was like a point where he's like, "Man, I get to go out there." I get to spread my wings, man, like a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking cracks me up. Man. I can't wait for him to fulfill the prophecy and become the fucking the heavyweight champion. Absolutely. But I think it is sadly time for our main event of the event. Where tonight we are reviewing... We have a pay-per-view review of WCW Slambury 1997. Oh, shit. I, I Which one did you watch, Shane? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I, no, I, just, I just didn't do any, any guesses for what you guys would rate it this week. Damn it. Oh, yeah, you didn't write anything. because Yeah, no, I just... You and your job. Yeah, it's okay. Was... Don't worry. This show came to us live May 18th, 1997. From the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. And you know, the show opened with, as everyone can expect, the WCW vs. NWO promo. Package video thingamabobby. And then we get to the first title match. WCW title match. Television title match where we have Ultimate Dragon with Sonny Ono taking on Lord Steven Regal. No, yes. not Lord Steven Regal. He, he doesn't want to be the Lord. Called... He, yeah, he dropped the Lord. He dropped the Very... Lord in like the one month between this and the last show. Yeah, no, they yes. was, they made a big deal about it on commentary. On commentary, yeah, they they. I mean, Shivani was going off about it, I believe, or maybe it was Heena. It was one or the can other. We, can we talk about the base commentary team for a minute? Because I know they threw in fucking Mike Tanay for one of the matches, and he was great, mm. by the way. And then some but, dork the next match. Yeah, I don't know who the, I can't remember what his name was, but it was like let, Mark Madden. But but Dusty. Your 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 uh your dad uh, Skiavone and fucking um um wow yeah, that was that was jarring uh, Skiavone and the then brain. fucking Bobby the Brain is quite possibly one of the funniest commentary teams I've ever listened to. Bobby is just like zero fucks given, especially at this point. Like he just says whatever the fuck he wants, and it's almost always incredible. Like there's like one point where he like literally just repeats something that the fucking someone just he's like I just said that Skiavone says he's like oh that's where I heard it <laughs> <Just like, laughs> he gives zero fucks there was a lot of talk about the Orient and coming from the Orient <laughs> which was which funny. it just feels really weird to hear the Orient yeah in but, 2021 
But yeah, I just want to shout out that commentary team before we dive in any deeper because it really was made the, the pay-per-view uh, much more interesting. Not that it wasn't an interesting pay-per-view by any means. It was really good. But uh, yeah, the commentary team was just fucking incredible. Yeah, I mean, and like especially like Shivani at this point has figured out how to deal with Bobby too. So like it's even it's even funnier because he pretty much just calls him an idiot and then moves on half the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's great. No, they they just have incredible chemistry. Dusty is just is dusty. Just out yeah, of the baby. Sport, Let's dude. get out there and see what happens, baby. <laughs> Look at that's this man. I, that is a I big man that's... in the ring. Now he's gonna go in there, he's gonna whoop some ass, baby. <laughs> it's a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they were, they were fun, but the the first the first match was great, dude. Like, what a way to start! Steven Regal is such a good worker. I mean, really, so, criminally maybe some underrated. of the the best facial expressions in the history of the business. Like, like his facial expressions. It, I mean, even today, but especially around this time, are just unstoppable. Man, you, you can tell everything that he wants you to feel exactly by his face a hundred percent of the time, and it's really awesome yeah 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 yeah. it's great it's great yeah, i know i i he i mean he, he just feels like one of those people that like uh regal's just one of those guys who can have a match with a fucking broomstick you know like he just is that good he really is look he can have a match with a broomstick and then the broomstick will become world champion three months later yeah, I mean, but he did that with Goldberg. Like, you know, he's just like, he fucking, he can work. And yeah, for like what they were doing, like there was, you know, like uh, Sonny, Sonny Ono like interfered at one point and Ultimate Dragon got all pissed off at him, and which is like kind of a cool moment where he's like, no, I want to fucking fight this guy. And yeah, it was just like for, for a start of a 1997 pay-per-view. I mean, do you have the match time on that one, Dozer? 16 minutes and four seconds. Yeah. Yeah. For an opening match in 1997, dude. It was awesome. I fucking On a pay-per-view where they squeezed 23 matches into three hours. <laughs> Bro, that's the one thing that WCW understood, though, was that, like... The cruiserweights and like this this end of the of the of the roster, you know, your 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 Regals and your Mysterios and your Malinkos and all of those guys, um, you know, that's the bread and butter of your show, and that's why you know that that is what separated WCW from WWE and made it something totally special. Much in the same way, like TNA felt different with the X division and you know the six sided ring as compared to the whatever. Um, but like that's one thing WCW did was they gave their bread and butter workhorses time to work because you know fucking Hogan isn't gonna go 16 minutes in a high well, velocity. That's, that's what I was just you thinking. You know, yeah. Piper around this time isn't gonna do it. Flair would, but there's nobody to wrestle Flair for that long. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, and like, keep up. Nash ain't doing a fucking more than five or eight minutes. Yeah, if no, he did I that mean, much, and he's yeah, not doing moves, fucking, man. And Scott Halls will go for a little bit, but he's he was getting so fucked up at that point that like you know like you couldn't count on it. <laughs> yeah, he I mean, would be wandering the back like Jericho can't find the goddamn ring. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, like in Spinal Tap. Yes, <laughs> that's what, I mean, what a great. You guys have to like also remember that um, like uh, Ultimate Warrior was 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 involved with wcw really heavily around this time like I, I i think we're gonna end up watching the disaster that was their halloween havoc match i think that was 97 oh, the, the fucking what was supposed to be the big fucking hogan versus warrior shit yeah and it was literally maybe the worst match of all time no that is like I mean, wildly like pretty yeah. well considered the the worst professional wrestling match of all time oh dude i and i guess like I, I think that was this year i'm so excited to watch we, it again. did we did we review this on the podcast already no i don't think so okay Okay, no. I, I have a vague memory of fucking talking. No, about we that. most of the shit we reviewed from WCW was way earlier when it was legitimately like old school. Because I definitely watched it. I just wasn't sure if we had like discussed it on the show because it's yeah. definitely worth a <laughs> it's definitely worth a discussion. 
But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, back to the match itself. Really good. William Regal, consummate professional, constant ultimate. holds, hard hit, hard hitting strikes. You know, Ultimate Dragon was everything you wanted him to be, except even maybe a little bit more aggressive, a lot more like st stiffer kind of you know punch based strikes. He, uh -huh. he did. And a they lot talked hold. about that on commentary yeah. too. They were talking about how they were expecting it to be hot, more high flying. I thought it was gonna be more high flying. He's in there throwing yeah. strikes. Yeah, no. It was it was but a great I'll tell you, I think the finish took away from it though, and that's that that's kind of the crux, which was Sonny Ono turning on 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 Ultimate Dragon in like a really weird way, and like it just didn't make sense with the flow of the match at all. Like it, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, he he will build legends and he will destroy legends, and it's like, why, what, <laughs> yeah, why did yeah. you do it that Doesn't way? Make, yeah, I mean, it was total fucking. But I mean, which is WCW, right? Like, yeah. do it in a nutshell. Is like they will put on a fucking four star match with a fucking negative two star finish, and and you end up with a two and a half star match from Isaac. Well, I'm just gonna give my thoughts on the finish here. Fucking bullshit! <laughs> oh. Wow, you, you you hit it with that botchamania action, man. <laughs> Dude, I got what a yeah. Shout but to, I will say, Mafu. the match was good enough that I'm going to give it a three point two five. Wow, that, okay. that's even like evenly roundable and shit. So I was going to hey, give it a three. Impressive. I was going to give it a three, and then the finish really took away from it. So that's why I stuck with two five. No, I, I I think that the match itself was better than a three, which is why I'm going to rate it a three because it was probably like a three five to a maybe even a light four if I was That's if good. I was really feeling it I could totally see me rating but the the finish sucks so much yeah God but yeah it's a three star match and and one that I would recommend watching there are plenty of three star matches I'm like hey you probably skip over but. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of three star matches you can skip over and talking about matches you can skip over. Sorry. Spoiler alert. We have Medusa taking on Luna Vashon. What a yeah, what a stinky thing. Yeah. What a stinky match. Other than um oh uh, uh Luna Vashon takes a, a fucking clothesline from hell or something. I don't remember what she did, but she flipped right on it. Was it like a was it a suplex? She but she lands right on her neck at one point towards the end of the match, and I was like, "Oh Jesus!" Um, other than that, it was just a sloppy mess. Yeah, I mean, really bad. That, and and I'm a big Luna fan. Like I really am. Luna is like is top top of the list of like female wrestlers for me. Like she comes from an incredible family. She could actually work. Her character was always like fucking intense and crazy and. I do not think uh, Medusa was anywhere near as good a, like a worker as she was, and it showed. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you but, remember how she landed on her head, though? <laughs> do you yeah. remember it all? No, I, it was so fast. It was like a five-minute match, and five was, minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, I mean, it was it was short. I mean, that was the thing about it. It was like it was short enough where it wasn't bad. You know what I'm saying? It was just like it was like whatever. It is what it is. Like I'm, I'm glad that they're giving women some time to wrestle, but like obviously they didn't, you know, <laughs> they just didn't have any time to like talk it out or do it or whatever. But it just was, it didn't work, and it was a one star match. And Shane and I agree. <gasps> oh, no! Take a swig of this this water. Ooh, get that water, man. I was giving it a one five, but y'all convinced me. I think I'll give it a one. We'll make it a three way. Okay. We'll make it a three way. I'll do my shot. All right, three ways are good. Three ways because are good. I need a shot to pronounce this next name. <laughs> you talk about crayon box. The crayon. So, while last night we may have announced that we have a Spanish announced team again, we still do not have a Japanese announced team. I'm so bummed I missed out last night. I, I got to say, I, I hope you guys had a good time. There'll be more. Don't worry. There will be more. So there will be more. We there will get be more last nights. Yes. There'll be plenty more last nights. That's a fact. Mm. 
So what's the next match? Sorry, I'm building up time to try and say Yuji Yakuso. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, Bobby taking on Ray Mysterio had Jr. a lot of trouble with that one too. He kept calling him Yoshi and Yogi. <laughs> Yogi, dude. No, that was on purpose, though. Oh, of course it That's, was. Oh, it, dude. But oh. that was when, this is when they brought Mike Tanay in, right? No, 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 no. They 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 had Tanay on um on the first match with William Regal, Ultimate Dragon. Oh, I thought they had him. In I believe. I, I mean, maybe they had, they had him, him for here. both. I, mean, I thought they. I know they had him on this match because fucking he was the one who was talked because they're like, yeah, we got Mike Tanay in here, and he knows everything, and he's talking about like fucking where like uh this guy had wrestled and how fucking uh Yogi or Yoshi had fucking wrestled with um raised as a tag team partner in japan at fucking oh, war yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he was like yeah, giving all the Lance Storm tag team partner yeah too yeah because he's like he wrestled yep. with ray and he wrestled against him. and then fucking bobby the brain oh Lance Storm sounds like a goddamn weatherman from fucking idaho or some <laughs> shit like that <laughs> fucking hey bobby you're fucking drunk again aren't you <laughs> hmm. So this match was fucking great, though. Yeah, this match was I, might be my one of my favorites of the night. Although, when I went into this and I watched the first half of this pay per view, I was like, man, looking at the card, I was like, the rest of this is going to be terrible. <laughs> after like, uh, you know, I think it was the Benoit match. Everything after that, I was like expecting it to be trash. But this whole pay per view was actually really good, with like a few minor exceptions. That this match might be one of my favorites, <clears throat> if not my favorite, my second favorite. Ooh. Yeah, I I'll tell you, I think that this match suffered from like obviously a lack of heat because nobody knew who uh Crayon Box was. Um but I mean it was it was solid, you know, the non-American style work. I mean, uh you know, the the the, the Japanese guy um a huge, like absolutely towered over Ray, lanky motherfucker. Um uh, you know, he, he was, you know, doing some more power moves and kind of holding Ray down. And Ray was, you know, what, like t- probably like 26 here. He was like, young. you know, He's like 26 younger. year old Ray was just insane. I mean, you know, Dude, he did that, Ray's- they had that spot where fucking uh, Yo- Yohi was outside or whatever on the on the ramp. And Ray went to do the dive out through the ropes and the ref stopped him. And he's fucking leaning out through the ropes, doing the one, mm-hmm. and Ray just fucking dives over him and fucking. Yeah, that, that's like an iconic him. Ray moment. And it was just like it was just so good, and he hit it perfectly, and like yeah, it was just like they everything they they did, they just nailed. Um, you could tell that they had worked together a lot, you know, like you could tell that they just had chemistry, and that you know it was just another classic case of WCW not knowing what to do and just being like you just go out and do whatever you want, and then here's a Here's your finish. You know? But that that's the thing. That's what is good. When you like good workers do what they want because mm-hmm. they know what they can do. Exactly. You tell them what to do and they can't fucking do it. But instead of doing that on purpose, they're doing it because they just didn't give a shit. You know, and that's the difference. Like instead of saying, okay, this is the way to get the best product. They're saying, we don't really give a shit what happens. Here's your finishes. We don't care what happens in the first half. We're going to focus on these last couple of matches with the football players. <clears throat> like, that's what we Kevin were. Green. Yeah. But but this one, man, um, whew, I want to give it uh, 3.75. I really had fun watching this match. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was great. That's higher than anything I expected from this. So. Yeah, coming yeah. in this was one of one of my like i said one of my favorite matches of the night and if i drink enough the uh we'll get to a point where maybe i'll throw out a four-star match for a match that doesn't deserve it but it, i fucking enjoyed it but i shouldn't have jane what you got um i got a three five on this one i i don't want to rate it higher than the um than the uh uh, uh stephen regal match but I, I I can't in good conscience uh, you know rate this one less than that because at least this one's finish wasn't fucked. No, it was, you know it was I mean and, you know everything that they did was 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 really good. I just wish that there was more stakes involved or at least more story so that way I cared a little more. 
but as is, it was just like a really good indie match. Yeah. Real finishes matter. And I do like and, seeing Young Ray. And I'm going to give this a 3-5 as well. I enjoyed it. I would have thought the Regal match would have been higher for myself. <clears throat> but, you know, I, maybe it was just having watched the New Japan shit that this rubbed off on me, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a great time with that one. Uh, so that we- brings us to Mortis with James Vanderberg taking on the immortal, the icon, the legend, Glacier. Sub Zero. I forgot this happened. Dude, this was, I mean, luckily it was what, like a minute, a minute. 40 seconds or something. Hey, yeah. hey, give it all it's worth. Minute 151. <laughs> Sorry, minute 51. Minute 51. Yeah. A minute 51. Um, It was like a quick DQ because he fucking hit him with like a fucking pipe or some stupid shit. Um, the only good thing in this match was fucking Ernest Miller coming out and fucking giving <laughs> um, Mortis that fucking roundhouse kick to the face and fucking planting him fucking st- vertically in the air it was a fucking awesome kick the replay looked so good um somebody better call his mama god damn i fucking was like holy shit is that fucking it even shades like is that fucking ernest miller <laughs> he's like what it made no sense it made no well, fucking sense but god damn did it look good it was the only thing about that match that was fucking worth a damn it happened after the match the match itself was barely a match so it gets 0.25 because there was two bells that rang <laughs> There's nothing else to say about it other than the fucking Ernest Miller came out and kicked him in the fucking teeth. I agree. I don't have anything to add. Dozer, go ahead. <laughs> well, I wanted to say that this match was glorious, but it wasn't. <laughs> oh, it oh. definitely wasn't. Wrath came out, right? And he's like, "Hold on, stop, to- drink." Oh, it's there- that. Hang that. Aaron, for you. Thank you. Thank Hello, you. Hello, Nathaniel. Um, but yes, uh, Wrath came out and they spelled it a couple times. Which I don't completely understand. But yeah, 0.25. Um, barely worth talking about. I will rate it slightly above any Punjabi prison match and give it a 0.2. <laughs> Point two. I, I see the scale's been broken for the first time today. <laughs> <coughs> Would I be anything if I didn't break a scale? My scale, I get on and it says, get off. So <laughs> You would be a non-scale Hey-o. breaker. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Yeah, I get on there. It says, not for light vehicles. Or, uh... Yes. Um, Shane, did you did you oh no no you, I said I, I just I agreed with you. I, I didn't have anything oh. to add. Okay. You so agreed with you while we drank. Yeah, you, you purposeful uh you purposely what hmm? you uh, completely encompassed uh okay I money. just wasn't sure if you had given your full rating. So if point yes. five works, I'll drink to that. Then we can move on to something better. That brings us to our WCW United States Championship match. Where we had Dean Malenko taking on Jeff Jarrett. And Jarrett is a full-fledged member of the Four Horsemen at this point, And the crowd is really digging it. That's all I got. Um, Fucking slap nuts. This is another good <laughs> match. As much as I don't like Jarrett, and I hate absolutely hate that fucking ring gear he wears with the fucking five suspenders on the front and the three on the back. God, that's it's terrible. It's that... the worst look, but uh, but I mean, like both those guys can work. They both can work, and they put on a really, really good match. Yeah, didn't like Mongo like take Deborah back during this match? And oh, yeah. God, it was so that part. Yeah, the finish yeah. and all that was. Oh cool. come on! Oh come on! He, he can handle he, it. He can handle it. Let's go. And he yeah, let's go. Then. And then fucking, yeah, like anything with what you start getting fucking Mongo in there, it's going to be bad. Um, yeah. I mean, 
But the, the issue Candy is Candy Graham for Mongo. <laughs> this this match here was kind of just the first match, except even more bat based and with a little to no, you know, flying at all. I just that's that's how I felt about it. it was like I just wish there was a little bit of uh flippy shit going I just on. Love I mean, it was, it was really good. Yeah, no, I mean it was excellent. How do you think you were getting flippy shit out of these two? Oh no, I no, I didn't think I would. I just I wanted it. That was yeah. But yeah, my thing is Dean. Dean is just such a good worker. Jared is a really good worker, even if he's a fucking prick. And um, you know they put on what was it? Uh, it was like a fifteen minute match. Like the the biggest issue with it was yeah the weird shit with Mongo coming out, and it was just like a weird fucky finish. Obviously, it's WCW, but the match itself, the work they did for a wrestling match for had an old school feel like I dug it I give it three I give it three stars this is where I give it a two five no and I get that I mean you know yeah. that makes sense uh, I'm gonna drink again because Nat's popping up again here and I don't know if it's a second appearance or not so I'm just gonna call it that and drink well while you are drinking and I will get a drink ready I am going to say only because Dean Malenko won this match, I am going to split the difference and give it a two point seven five. Man, we are we are very diverse in our opinions this evening. Look, I don't. I, don't, I love Dean Malenko, while at the same time, I think he deserves a boring chance. So I'm not like hot or cold <laughs> on either of these guys. They're Me. both like middle of the road. They're the <laughs> definition of mid carters. Did we get some '90s chants or what? <laughs> this what? Oh, Whew. we'll get to that a little later. <laughs> so, but yeah, I that know. brings us to the match. That if you know anything about the participants, you knew the ending. I feel really uncomfortable saying this, but in a death match, you have Meng taking on Chris Benoit with Woman. Rest in peace to her. Um, yeah. Rest in hell to the other one. Yeah. Don't, yeah, just, you know, whatever. Um, but this was another really good match. It was the story, the story going into it was interesting. The idea that this is just Ma like Mang is going to go in there and beat the fuck out of him. And he knew it. And he's like, I don't care. I'm going to go in there and do it. The biggest issue I have with this match, and I think. I think for once, all of us are going to be in agreement. Was that fucking woman was really annoying in this match? Oh, really please. annoying, and the and the weird the weird Jack Jackie run in was yeah, fucking, the, didn't, I mean, didn't yeah make any sense. And even them trying to explain it on commentary didn't make any sense. But the in-ring work was great. Meng is fucking, like, it's Meng. Dude. The dude is fucking intimidating. He'll yeah. rip your fucking throat out. And that's just because he likes you. And that's what yeah, he did. I, that's what he I really did. Liked the, I really liked the finish, too. Yes. For once. On this. Yeah, I thought the finish great. Uh, was, was, was super cool. fucking throat out. <laughs> he got him. <laughs> he choked the shit out of him. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, 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 but I hate at the end. They were like, "Yeah, he, he looked at woman and he shook his head." And I'm sure we're gonna be able to see that on commentary. And then like they play it, and it's just not there. And it's like, how, like that is clearly like the defining moment of this match. How do you, how do you miss that? Yeah. Like, yeah, like that is clearly what what they wanted to focus on. Mm -hmm. And, well, uh, they did, they fucked up. Yeah, they, they fucked, fucked up, up a lot of that. And the running, they fucked up. They're like, oh, she stared her down, and she ran away. She turned, and it was like they didn't show any of it. Like they didn't show Jackie leaving. They just showed that weird clip of of woman sort of staring at something, but it didn't look like she was staring towards wherever Jackie was. <laughs> It was just I think weird. she was literally staring at the camera, like yeah. directly to the left of yeah. the camera. It just felt awkward and forced, and it didn't seem like it was, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't necessary in that. But, but the match itself, like once you get inside the ring, was great. And I'm also going to say the ending didn't suck because 
given the time, trying to go back to 1997 here, where this was not overdone, they had Benoit pass out instead of tap out. Yeah, they choked him. They choked him out. Like he, pa- he passed out. That protected him. That gate that put over Meng's finisher there. And he still got to like do the thing where like he was beating the shit out of Benoit. No, it was a yeah. good match. I think without the, all the other bullshit, it would have been a solid three, maybe three two five. I'm gonna go two seven five on it because the rest of the shit that happened really distracted from me. The finish was good. I'm going to go three because the finish was really good. I'm going to say three, down from three, two, five. I talked myself up a point two five. Shane, what do you got? I'm going to rate it a three, five, because it was uh, the best booked um, match of the night so far. Like the booking It's throughout. WCW. That's a very low bar. Yeah, but the booking throughout made sense. Like, and, and it was a story I understood, and it was a story they told well. And I, I, I think the finish was fitting, like you said, Dozer. Um, I, I can tune woman wailing out. To be, I, I cannot. What, I mean, I mean, it was annoying, but I was also laughing at her half of the time. So, <laughs> like, whatever. Um, I've heard shit on Pornhub that sounded more realistic than what was going on there. You know, I'm an XNXX guy. Look, neither of them are sponsoring us, so we should stop dropping their names. All right. Well, XNXX, if you want to. If you like tranny porn. <laughs> and on that bombshell, I'm going to say I'm giving this match a three, and Shane can finish his review of it. Oh, no, I'm good. Three. I'm cheering. Yeah. Three. That brings us to... You're going to make me say this name, aren't you? We have Conan and Hugh Morris with Jimmy Hart taking on the Steiner Brothers. You know what? I really, really thought this was going to be dog shit. And I actually found myself enjoying this more than I probably should have. It wasn't great by any means, but for a bunch of big dudes just throwing each other around and beating the shit out of each other, I had a really good time. The... The one thing that annoyed me about this this match is Tony spends about a minute towards the end of the match talking about one of um, the Steiner suplexes. And he's like, yeah, it, it hurt him so much more because he landed on the flat of his back. And that's different from landing on his head and neck. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Tony? Like- landing right is hurts more? What? Yeah, no, he, he was like, yeah, and this was a different position. Maybe, I was like, maybe an AEW, but <laughs> uh, like New Japan, know. New Japan. Oh Jesus, God, dude. But yeah, no, <laughs> that yeah, no, like the commentary was whatever. But I mean, I went in expecting it to just be a mess, a fucking complete mess, and there well, was had some, Hugh Morris. But dude, they, I mean, Hugh Morris got thrown around by the Steiners. <laughs> yeah, he fucking, bumped. They bumped the shit out of him. And well, um, the dumbest shit, you know, obviously is like the forced conflict with fucking Conan and Hugh and fucking Jimmy Hart. I thought we were blood in, blood out. You said blood in, blood out. You said blood in, blood out. And hearing Jimmy Hart yell that shit is just like the weirdest thing. <laughs> so I was like, what are you, like, what? <laughs> blood in, blood out. I also think it should be noted how an athletic big man was so rare at this point in wrestling history. Like, this is what made Scott Scott. He was athletic. He could do shit no big man could do. Like landing on his own head with his finishing maneuver. Hey, whatever, dude. I, you, he you had things that, that sucked. I and still, his math like ability is questionable, but... He was a math teacher, bro. Come on now. <laughs> but I, I like this match. It wasn't like anything like special. Um, I don't know if I'd go back and watch it. I might go back and watch it just for shits and giggles because I like seeing them literally just throw fucking Hugh Morris across the ring. <laughs> but I mean, it was two and a half stars for me because it was really entertaining. And I genuinely did not expect it to be. It's a two two five for me. Um, not because it's slightly lower than Isaac, but because that's how I feel. 
You're allowed to feel however you want. <laughs> well, as you see, I am raising the glass. I'm agreeing with Shane. It's a 225. 225. Mm. All right, all right, all right. So that leads us into um, is there two more? One more? Are we, are we at the end? No. We no 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 no. We have to put oh, this god. bullshit in here. Oh god! Look, it pains me to say this because one of these guys is a Philadelphia legend. Let's. But get, I let's gotta get, fucking say it. Let's get this over with because this is fucking dog shit. Let's just. We have this. Candy Graham for Mongo taking on Reggie White. Dude. Um, Look at those drop kicks. Look at look at that drop kick. Oh, it's a collar and elbow, elbow tie. If it's a collar and elbow tie. Can I just say elbow. can I just I, say just zero that, stars. Zero stars. I'm just point kidding. no, it was a match because it was 15 fucking minutes. Yeah, I don't care. It was it this, was zero it was stars. point point. It was a match. So we have to rate it something other than zero. And in, in, in the rules for this. So I'm rating it point. Zero one. It is point zero one. This is as low on the scale as I can go. On I can go. Is point zero one. This was fucking well, literally the worst thing I've seen in the in the whole time we've fucking done this show. It was the worst thing I've seen. Not because, <laughs> not because and we watched bad. Flaming Sting fly yeah. off the Turner yeah. Tron. Not just because it was bad wrestling, which it was. But because it was 15 fucking minutes of bad wrestling when there was no reason for it. Yeah, Give it this shit put should that, have been three minutes. Uh, three to five. Five would have been pushing it, but you want to get fucking Reggie or whatever. The, you you want to give Reggie, him his time. Reggie White. But, I mean, um, and, and the, it was the, dog the, shit in every like, fucking single way. There wasn't and, even a point to it because Mongo won. Like, there was, by cheating. I mean, there was just no, Mongo didn't look any better. In fact, he looked worse because he couldn't beat a, a non-wrestler unless he was cheating. Reggie White just lost. He didn't look particularly good. And, yeah, this is nonsense. It's, it's, I don't care. It's zero. <laughs> zero. Okay, Shane is, with the scale was broken earlier by Dozer. Yeah. Shane has shattered it. Zero, it, zero, point zero one for me. So what I'm going to say is when you have a celebrity in a match, you need a ring general in with them. Mongo. Mongo is not that guy. Dude, he's and not even a fucking <laughs> no. a ring grunt. I might take Kali over him, to be honest. Dude, honestly, yes. uh, no. No, I won't, I won't go that far. I will at say... At least Kali is funny. He can be entertaining. So... Well, I'm his, gonna say his Instagram is quite possibly the most entertaining thing I've ever seen. And I don't mean to take us off track here, but but one, one of the last Instagram videos I watched of him was just him holding up a dog and being like, This is my dog and I love it. And he's just like holding it by its head, like in the air, and you're just like, okay. <laughs> it's a lot of videos of him standing there doing it. It's awesome. Go follow him on on Instagram. It is the fucking best. I swear to you, you will not be disappointed. So, lucky for all of you, I work in finance in a world where half a sense exists for no fucking reason. So I can confidently give this a point zero zero one. Even worse than me. Wow. Okay. Both awesome. bells rung. Both bells wrong. It was a match. That's I can have story. to give it more than a zero. But nobody said how much more than a zero I have to give it. If you start collecting all those point zero zero ones, though, you get that Superman 3 shit going on like Richard Pryor, and all of a sudden you're a billionaire. Look, what? this match could have been half a star if it was five minutes long. Yes. Yes, I agree. It I agree. could have I mean, had. It could have been 15 fucking minutes. I think we've spent way too much time talking about it. Even <laughs> uh, let's get on to the main event. Oh dear God! Oh, we got to talk about the. Hold on. Do we have two? Ma we have two matches left still. Wait, we do. 
I thought we just had the main event. Did we just do Steve McMichaels with Reggie White? And now we're on the last sit. This is it. We only got one left. Yes, sorry. I scrolled Oof. too far on no, my no, list we're here. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're, I was Rick, like, what did I miss? Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, and Kevin Green, another football player for some reason. Look, I'm drunk. Just it's okay. deal with it. You. Just I deal with you. it. And they're fighting we have, the NWO, which was Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and uh, and six six. Pack. Yeah, we got the NWO taking on WCW. Okay, this match, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that is gonna be surprising. I literally thought this was gonna be the worst thing on the card, and it ended up being my favorite match of the night. That is ridiculous. I had so much fun watching this. And and part of it is because Roddy Roddy Piper is like all time like one of my absolute favorites. Ric Flair is incredible. It, I thought it, I thought six was really good. Um, they used they used Green really well for it. I think the only thing I didn't like about the match was that Kevin Nash no sells everything. Bro, it wasn't a match for like the first half of it. It was just gimmicks, bro. It was it was Ric Flair styling and profile, and it was it was it was it was, it was Scott Hall going a six man tag with legitimate main eventers. What did you expect? I had so um, much fun. Actual wrestling. Fun. No, I love Roddy. Look Roddy at the Flair. people in the match. I love Ric Flair. Uh, and and like I said, my biggest issue is Scott Hall, not, like no selling everything. He no sold everything. I mean, Kevin Nash didn't sell a thing in his entire career, man. I know, I know. except for his ham hammies. <laughs> sold the yeah, shit out of those hamstrings. Yeah, bro. But, and Connor sold his leg. I mean, you know. <laughs> but no, but like I honestly like the the storytelling in the match. I thought was really good. Um, this is where we get to the what I was talking about and alluding to earlier with the uh, with the '90s chants. Um, did y'all did y'all notice when the fucking when Six went and did the Bronco Buster? I think on um, Rick it was on Rick Flair, and he's fucking Bronco Bustering him in the corner. Did you hear the crowd chants? They were definitely cha- chanting hard f bombs. I'm not talking about fuck because we can say that. I'm talking about the bundle, <laughs> the bundle of sticks or the pack of cigarettes in England. <laughs> I, was I, like, I, I was listening. I was like, what are they chanting? Savage? Fast? Fat, fat? Oh, fat. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, 1997. Yeah, okay, okay. Got it, got it. I just have to say it's funny to watch where Isaac draws the line. Well, you know, like I uh, – yeah, that's oh, just uncalled for. I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just finding it amusing. Yeah, you know, like even even I have a boundaries, you know, and there's there's <laughs> ones that start with N, there's one that starts with F. Uh, you know, there's a few of them that I'm like, yeah, those are not okay. You those know, Isaac, okay. I'm so glad that you have a boundaries. I do, um, I do, I do, I do. I definitely have boundaries. Yeah, well, no, uh, you, you know, it's I'm, not like I'm gonna... Trump in his wall. I'm going to get um, my uh, quick rating out of here so that way, uh, just because I feel like I like it significantly less than you, you do. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, this was like a one and a half star match. Yeah, you're wrong. It's a four. Bro. Two and a half. Yeah. Fuck you both. Oh, I'm serious. Out. I'm serious. You I watched so it. out of your mind. I are you kidding? Much. I swear to you. I swear to you. And this isn't just me because I'm drunk. And this is what I was saying earlier. I shouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did, but I really, really did. I had Dude, so much it, fun. I was, I was like, I was completely drawn in more than any other match on the card. And I don't know whether it was because I went in with such low expectations. Because sometimes for me, like if I go in expecting dog shit, and it's better than that, like. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like okay. Yeah. Well, it, no, but honestly, but, honestly, I had a fucking great time. I was awesome. Dude, I was so entertained. And, so and, entertained. And, and I like, know, not, I know. The re- yeah. the work wasn't the greatest, but I, I like pure entertainment and entertainment value for me. I'll go back and watch it. This is the third time right now behind my screen. It's the third time. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm trying to watch like what I can. And even yeah. fucking and even fucking green did a really good job. 
Yeah, no, and it, like it wasn't a disaster. It was just so 1990s. I mean, the entirety of WCW, really. But I mean, it, it was. So but it was dis- 1997. Well, yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. That's the issue. Is 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 it was what it was, and to me, to say that this was like a better wrestling match than something like the uh, uh, like the Benoit match is. <laughs> out of this world insane <laughs> it's not a see and this is the thing it's not a better technical or in-ring match but i was more entertained by it 100 percent, i was yes i, mean, I really was and, and, and like that's an the thing is like, deal. And like I, I can understand why you would enjoy it more than but i enjoy and i enjoyed benoit i enjoyed all the other stuff like i really did like this pay-per-view on a whole like for 1997 dude are you fucking kidding me like i i think i want to give this pay-per-view a, a four this is one of the best pay-per-views we we have reviewed this year in the pay-per-view uh rear view segment not maybe no, not, not with the nxt agree with that not with the nxt stuff but with the pay-per-view rear view stuff like all the all the wwf and wcw stuff we've re- we've reviewed so far this is one of my favorite pay-per-views that we've done from 1997 oh and i i totally agree with you but i think that the booking was too shitty throughout i mean and again that's just a wcw issue i think the booking was too shitty throughout and i think the last two matches were just such a buzzkill after like the work we had seen earlier it's still like a three-star <laughs> pay-per-view like I mean, and that and that's, I mean, and and that's because it shot itself in the foot. That's not because it was just mediocre. I mean, they 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 gave themselves a three. Yeah. No, I mean, it really was like some some pretty consistently great stuff, with a few exceptions, obviously. But you know, like the majority of it was great. And I'm uh, not going to disagree. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fact that. Two pay-per-views in a row, you had the refs screwing the NWO. That's a big deal back in this time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the, the finish would have been a lot cooler live, obviously. I'm, I'm yeah. reviewing it. But I'm giving it a 2-5. Well. It, it exists. It does. If I'm doing something like this and I'm trying to rewatch 1997, I won't skip it. But I'm not necessarily going to ever watch this again. I'd watch it again just for commentary. Just for that commentary team was so good. But I think that we've all given our reviews for this pay-per-view. I think we're you know closing in on the end of our show for this week. And, and I do have to say it's been a little while since we've gotten to do uh, this format. Last week we had their live interview. The week before that we had a pre-recorded interview. Um, so it's been a little bit you know time so this has been a lot of fun first of all and second of all speaking of interviews i think it's time to announce the next one that we're gonna do um i think what are we gonna when are we debuting this one let me just double check i do not have the graphic pulled up so you gotta i have pull this shit out of your ass I i don't have the graphic i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say we're gonna record this one and i think we're releasing it uh next Friday, I want to say, but just give me one second because I'm a little. I think it's a 420 release. It's a 420 release, July 23rd, which yes, next Friday, July 23rd, 420 a.m. in the morning. So just like tomorrow morning with ODB at 420 in the morning on SuchGoodShoot.com, next Friday the 23rd, Hornswoggle will be joining us. Vince McMahon's fucking kid, the anonymous Raw GM, not so anonymous anymore. Where did Dozer go? God damn, he booted himself. <laughs> Hold on, let me get rid of this bullshit now that fucking Dozer's gone. I I, I think he just yeeted. Oh, there he Dozer is. Dozer yeeted, there he is. Hey! Oh, he's back. <laughs> did you yeet yourself? <laughs> did I only? Yes. Yes. Well, yes, I did. Okay, what happened was is he got so excited when I said horn swoggle that his big old hog smacked the keyboard, got hard instantly, smacked the keyboard and booted himself out. Whatever, Shane. You know he sucked. Funny. But anyway, yes. Um, we got horn swoggle, and we're super excited for that. Um, next Thursday. Um, we will be we will be back with another. I think we're doing a 
an NXT. We're either doing an NXT or we're doing WWF. I can't remember. But next Thursday we'll be back. We'll look at the schedule. Episode. Yeah, we'll look at the schedule. We don't really give a two, shit. two, two seconds. I, yeah, we, 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 do we, that. And I'm going to I'm going to keep I'm going to keep talking. And in at the end of that episode, we are going to announce another really, really special and incredible guest. I am truly shocked that we're even able to say this and, and talk to this fellow because oh, I'm excited. I'll give you a little hit. The one thing I will say is this man is still under his no compete clause from WWF. I am so, going to say, and this may be saying too much. Yeah. You're saying too much already. <laughs> Are you going to say I've been Isaac. That's been fucking dozer over there. Shane. It's Shane. We love so, you. Next week, 97 King of the Ring. Hell yeah. 97 oh, King of I'm the excited Ring. for this shit. I love King this of the Ring. Is, is that Triple H? Is that Triple H's time to finally show? I, 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 I do I do believe that he that this is him uh in, coming coming off of the, the awesome. click treatment. Awesome. So yeah, so so stay tuned next week. For that tomorrow morning, suchgoodshoot.com. Uh, we got our ODB episode dropping. Definitely make sure to go check out Wrestling with Johners and all of the awesome podcasts on there. Uh, what do you say with DDJ? Our good friend uh, Brad Martin. Well, it's on wrestling, absolutely. And you know what? Um, Patreon.com front slash suchgoodshoot. Go there. Uh, give, give us money. Play. Give us money. Pay me to watch They Live. Because I really I, want Shane to watch They Live. And then go to suchgoodshoot.com. Check out our merch section. Uh, buy some stuff. Get an I'm Jewish with Isaac shirt. And um, help us pay for all these fucking interviews <laughs> we're doing. <laughs> Goddamn, I'm going broke. <laughs> I got kids. Uh, these are facts. Check out, and check out our Heath interview. Check out our Barry Horowitz interview. That just dropped. Dude, um, Barry is amazing. It was a really fun interview. Um, the Heath interview was one of the most fun interviews I think we've done. Um, check that out. The ODB one is another really, really incredible one. She is, yeah, just an awesome, genuine person. Yeah, really, really, really cool. Really, really cool really person. Her, so. Keep an eye out for all that and uh, for all the other awesome shit we have coming up. We're fucking super stoked. Keep your eyes uh, on suchgoodshoot.com. Oh, Until next time. Medias. That's Shane. That's Isaac. I'm Dozer, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you for listening to this edition of Such Good Shoot. If you are on YouTube, please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon. Or subscribe to us on your favorite audio catcher. Or finally, if you're on Facebook, leave a comment, like the video, and make sure to share it out to all your friends. Until next time, we have been such good shoot, and have a great day.